So Peter, last week we uh, had a whole conversation about this idea of the feeding of the 5,000 and how Jesus literally said to them at the end, okay, go get in the boat, I'm going to go pray. So where are we going this week? So I think it's very interesting that he did that, you know, because we feed uh, the people. It's just kind of an analogy of saying Sunday mornings you feed the people along with the disciples as a team. And uh, you saw the power in feeding people. So many lives are touched Sunday mornings. But then he says to them, I just don't want you to go back and live a normal kind of a life that everybody lives. But you're my disciples. I'm going to tell you Monday morning, get on the boat, go on the other side. That's the challenge, right? right? So the word there is he compels them to get on the boat. You know, in other words, he's, he's pushing them. And he says, get on the boat. And I think as you make disciples, sometimes you have to push people to do things. Uh, you, 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 sometimes, you know, as a disciple maker, leader, pastor, we are very gentle. Do you have time? Do you have time? You know, pastor, I don't know who has time. I mean, everybody has something on their plate, but sometimes I think you have to just push a little bit and say, do this. Uh, Isn't it amazing, right? There are moments where we want to disciple people. They say they want to be involved with yeah. us. They want to get all connected to us. And when you go to them, and I'll never forget, I was sitting with this couple, and we were about to launch House We Go, this other church campus, right? And they were good friends. And solid Christians, they loved Jesus, everything about them was great. And so we went out to dinner. And so over dinner, I said to them, well, can I count you in? Can you be part of our core team to really help us reach this community for Christ? And uh, I'll never forget her response. She looked at him, he looked at her, and they, she, she goes, we'll, we'll pray about it. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, are you really going to pray about it? Or are you using that as the Christian excuse yes. to, to later say to me, oh, pastor, we're not really interested or God didn't tell us anything? Because just tell me one way or the other, because I think you know if God's tugging on your heart, he tells you yes. in the moment that I ask you to go do this. And I'm sure when Jesus called those disciples, when he said, you go, yeah. they didn't go, well, I'll be back and I'll pray on it, Jesus. Yeah. They went, okay. Right? And so discipleship and pushing people, I think it is literally listening to God and making that movement because Jesus obviously being God, when he asked yeah. them, they didn't go, okay, well, I need to clear this. He yeah. said, no, go and pray. He, he, he said, go, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, basically the big idea is that uh, in the Western Hemisphere, we, we made a church a place where people can come get the teaching, hear the preaching, and yes, there is a growth because it's God's Word. But I don't think we really grasp the idea of becoming a disciple. Mm -hmm. That word is so foreign uh, to the Western Hemisphere that people really think discipleship and disciple making or becoming a disciple is a course. Mm -hmm. And then I live my normal life. They don't think disciple as a life. Um, I, I follow Christ because I'm a disciple. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Christian, you know what I'm saying. But I think when we say, I want to follow Jesus, I'm saying I want to be a disciple. And for that, you don't have to pray about it. <laughs> and you just, you just join your team. You say, I follow Jesus. Yeah, you know, we made following Christ as believing in Christ and that something that is only personal to me. It is personal, but it is also a public commitment. Now you're called as a disciple of Christ. You know, when people followed Christ, they always were engaged in something. You see the scriptures, they said that I, I, I want to believe in you, I believe in you. Then they became a kind, kind of a people persons, you know, involved in people's life, right. helping people. So I think uh, that idea of, you know, I pray about it, I want to do something. Disciples really don't have to pray. And I'm not saying don't pray. For you to be a follower of Christ, disciple, the Western Hemisphere, we have made it like that to say church. But I'll tell you what, in the Eastern religions, if you study the Eastern religions, there is a clear idea of who the guru, if you use that word guru, and we now use that term in other languages. Right. You know, in business world, we, we call the gurus. And they're followers. Right. They're, they're followers. But bringing to the church, the language has not shifted. The language should be our language. 
You know, I come to church because I'm a follower of Christ. Now, let me see what is a follower of Christ. How am I witness at work? How am I doing at work? What is my ministry at work? So I think this is a big picture that Jesus gives this commission to the disciples. Now you go. Do you think a part of that discipleship issue that we're having today in America is a result of the Western culture's individuality? Like being an individual is everything. We don't actually want to join anything anymore. People don't want to join anything to be a part of it. People don't even like joining a church. Well, I don't know if I'm going to join the church, you know. Well, just come, right? The whole idea of joining means that I am losing some of my identity, wherein I believe in Eastern culture, your identity is in the group you're a part of. Do you think that individuality is one of the reasons we're struggling today in America? Primarily. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a so individualistic life we live. We don't live in communities. Right. We're not, we don't belong. We join a club, that becomes a community. Now take the same thing, disciple, I'll use another word. Okay, we go to the, uh, you join a football club. Yeah. You, your children are praying, uh, playing some game, you join a club. Disciple word is discipline. You and I know that. It's right. a discipline. It's a discipline of life. Now for all the games, you take your children, you attend, you go, you are somehow connected. You don't miss a beat. But when it comes to church, it's a choice. Right. Oh, I wish we can change the term choice to say, you know what, this is first. If eternity, you really count eternity, I think you need to pay attention to what Jesus is saying. I love the games, children should be involved in the games, all that is true, but what about the church? Yeah. Who's going to manage the church? It's convenient for us to say we pay the pastor, we pay somebody to preach and tell us on Sunday morning, let him do the work, and we'll just come and listen. That's the majority. There are people right. that are function. Right. Uh, but I think we need to change the idea of a disciple and disciple making. We don't have the word disciple making. We think it's a course or a book that we read. Right. It, we don't take it as a life. I'm a follower of Christ, therefore I'm a disciple of Christ. Right. And he's my guru. Well, if we actually took it seriously, yeah. right? I, I think that's what you're saying. I can sit and read all of this. I can walk through it. I can have all of this great teaching. But um, I remember hearing a pastor once talk about all the sermon, all the classes he ever went to. And he said, you get a blue binder with every class you go to, the, and you put it on the shelf, and you never look at it again. And I think discipleship has become the blue binder. Exactly. Right? I took the blue binder, I put it on the shelf. Oh, yeah, I've been through that class. Yeah. I'm, I'm good, pastor. Yeah. Well, has anything changed? Yes. And, and I think that's the key to discipleship. Absolutely. Has, are you changing to look more like Christ, Christ as part of what you are learning and yeah. the community of people you're hanging out with and do you all have that same goal yeah and, and not only look Bob sometimes you know we, we hang on the words when we say we, we look like Christ yeah I'm looking but what what are you doing right like what Christ is doing man right. or Christ has done right. because according to the book of Acts he's still doing it. and he's doing it because of what the church is doing so I think sometimes we hang on these words and, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I'm like that, but what are you doing? What are you doing to the community you live in uh, that is helping others? Right. I think that's a deeper, deeper question. We not only, Jesus was mighty in word, but also in deed. So I think the deed part, we left it to somebody else to do it. <laughs> the, the, the other organization. Well, it, this goes to the conversation you and I have had in the past, right? Uh, the church was once filled, as Ephesians 4 tells us, right, with apostolic folks, with prophetic folks, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, and somewhere in the Western culture, we got rid of the apostolic, the prophetic, and the evangelist, and we're left with teachers and shepherds, or I like to say teachers and chaplains, and those two are fighting it out to see who will last longer, and we've taken the ape and put it on the back of the church because, quite frankly, it's not going anywhere, yeah. right? And yeah. so... We've got to realize we've missed something in, in its word and deed, as you've said. And I think that's the key to great discipleship is both. And so Jesus, as, he, as he's developing these disciples, I, I love the word that he says, you go. Right. And here, here's the key thing. You know, he went to pray. But I, I believe not only he was praying, but I, was, I think he was keeping an eye as they were going what was going to happen. Because he turns up, when the problem comes, he turns up. So I think the, yes. the segment that we're looking at, it, 
he compels them to go and, and go back to work. But while they're working, they face a challenge in their lives that, that becomes such a big problem for them. And I think that's the beauty of becoming a disciple, that you do face problems. In problems, you discover who you are. And most of the Christians don't want problems. Right. Well, <laughs> what a great leadership lesson right there, right? Jesus stood back, allowed the storm to come on him. They're panicking. And here he comes, kind of nonchalantly walking right. on the water. Oh, there you guys are. And yeah. <laughs> the storms are blowing. They're terrified. And Jesus says, hey... I'll be over there in a second, uh, and let me help you. And of course, we love Peter and impetuous Peter in that moment, jumping out of the boat. I want to, I want to have the faith, you know. But at least he tried something. We can laugh about him jumping and sinking because of his own fear, but that's a leadership issue too, right? Yes. They were there. Jesus helps him up. They both get into the boat. What a wonderful lesson, right? In leadership. So I think we can we can summarize this segment by saying. This, when you're making disciples, or you as a discipler, and we all have our, we are being discipled, either you're this or that, uh, doesn't matter, but we're always being discipled by Christ. Right. So we'll never forget that. Right. And through each other in the body of Christ. But when you're helping the new Christians become the disciples, sometimes encourage them to move forward in faith. Yeah. This is my, my thing to say, that you know, encourage them, encourage them, by, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing now, but I'm saying push them into faith. Right. Push them into places that they're... Un and I, I've seen, i watched when you push people, suddenly they discover because God is with them, not you and I, God is with them, and they can start doing things they never imagined. I think that's the beauty of... So I think the second segment, we need to remember that Jesus wants to encourage us to step into faith. Mm -hmm. And that's a story. And I, you and I can tell a lot of stories. I remember a lady was attending young, uh, you know, young uh, person coming to this conference training and all that stuff was going on. And I pushed her, why don't you just start a small group in your home? Oh, no, no, do you think I can do that? I'm, I'm not a pastor. That's the first fear. I, I said, no, just call them, sit with them, talk to them, tell them some Bible story. You think I can do that? I can do that. I mean, a lot, lot of conversations and a lot of encouragement. The ultimate word I want to say, I gently pushed her. Mm. And I tell you, today, I see her being so active in churches. I mean, she's in so many places just doing a great ministry, encouraging the same thing what I have done to her. I'm just saying that as a, and you've done to so many other people. Mm -hmm. uh, we know some of our friends that they have, They've seen, it's not about coming to church, but how many would become ministers or servants mm -hmm. or disciples of doing something. Mm -hmm. So we want to close this segment by reminding ourselves, as a leader, you as a leader, disciple maker, disciple maker, are we pushing people into faith and saying, do, encourage them. That's what Jesus did by encouraging them to go to difficult places. Amen. Amen. Well, I look forward to the next section. And we'll talk more then.